Hey there. Welcome to the Literary Escape Podcast. I'm your host, Becky, and I'm glad you're here today. On the Literary Escape Podcast, we talk about books, we talk about escapes that we can have through our books, and I always have some great book recommendations for you. So, buckle up and let's see where we're going today. Enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome back to another fabulous author interview on the Literary Escapes podcast. Today I have author Laura Drake with me. Laura Drake is an award-winning author of romance and women's fiction. And let's jump right into the interview. How's it going, Becky? It is going well. How about you? Oh, really good. I so appreciate this opportunity. It was great meeting you. You too. And it's my pleasure. I'm so happy to have a platform to be able to do this on. And so oh, that's awesome. A I lot appreciate of fun. it. So how did you get started in writing? You know, I, I never planned to be a writer. I, of course, have been a crazy reader my entire mm-hmm. life, but authors were smart. You know, I wasn't smart enough to do that until I got a story in my head that I just would not leave you. Yeah. I sat there at a blank computer screen for a year Mm -hmm. and thinking about writing it down, but God, I look stupid and, you know, all the stuff that goes through your head. And then I looked down one day and went, I have a delete key. (laughs) I can write the whole thing and then delete it and nobody needs to know how stupid But at least I it's really out think. of your head. Yeah. That's right. And it worked getting it out of my head. But by the time I was done writing it, my goal had changed. My goal yeah. was to have, hold a book with my name on the cover. Yep. So and that how- started 15 years of wow. trying to get. And so... Um, the actual writing of it, how long did that take you? My first one took a year. Okay. To just to get it on paper. Yeah. And of course, it was as bad as I was afraid it was going to be. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, that's when you're expected. a reader, you, you read it and it looks easy, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you whip through a really good book in a day, and it took that author a year <laughs> to write it. I know. Yeah. And then you're ready for the next one. And the author's like, wait. (laughs) Yes, exactly. They're going, okay, where's the next one? (laughs) It's next year. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. It's a lot harder than you think. (laughs) The authors that, I mean, is it um, Elena Johnson, who I don't know if she still does, but I was watching one of her talks where she was cranking out like a book a month. And I can't even imagine that uh that yeah. just leaves me speechless <laughs> I, I agree i cannot even add them that i mean wow yeah and she must be popular because you know her, she's very right? popular right yeah uh, wow. i'm not yeah she's very popular and she obviously has a bunch of books um incredible yeah but, bet. yeah that just blew my mind yeah. even authors that do like four a year that yeah. seems like a lot because they've got, you know, different series where they try to put one out of each series kind of thing. Right, right. And honestly, they say if you're going to be indie published, that's a requirement, you know, not an X number a year, but right. you've got you to keep prolific. cranking out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. My tightest deadlines were two a year and okay. that almost, I had a, a contract for three books and it was every six months at the end I was so burnt out I bet you're exhausted now I can do it eight months easy but six months that's a lot yeah every every sick day or every day you take off to go fishing or whatever Mm -hmm. you're gonna pay (laughs) you are yeah I mean there's a lot that needs to get crammed into that time six months feels like a long time at the beginning of course as you go along, you're editing the book before. So that takes time too. Right. People are uh, for a year or more. Oh, yeah. yeah oh I, my exactly. God. Exactly. Yeah. Crazy. So 
what was your first published book? The one that came out first was The Sweet Spot. Okay. Which was the one that I won the Rita for yeah. uh, best first book. And Very cool. I don't know if you see it. There's a Rita. Oh, right look there. at that. Aww. I'm so proud. You should be. Um, That's amazing. Well, you know, and again, that was 15 years of trying to get an agent and writing. And that was my third book that I wrote. Okay. So I okay. learned slowly, but I get there eventually. Well, and that's, I, it's interesting because, I mean, I've talked to a lot of authors and I love hearing their path to becoming a published author. And they are all so different. There's very yeah. few where the first book that spews out of their head is actually published. And there's very few that it doesn't take a long time. So and it's but, interesting. You know what? Those few, when we authors hear it, it's like, oh, those are the that ones that's, the that's the ones that stick. It's <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to do that. <laughs> exactly. Or I'm a loser because I didn't do that. Right? Exactly. But then that, that is, that's why I try and tell uh, aspiring authors that is the lightning strike. Yeah. Right. It yeah. does happen, but it's nothing you can predict or stand out in the rain and wait for, you know. Exactly. It's like it's like reviews. If you get, you know, 100 good reviews, but then one bad one, it's the bad one that's going to stick out. It's the same thing with, you know, the one author that makes it easily or yep. you know, seemingly easy um, seemingly always yeah. Seemingly. <laughs> well it's, yeah I, I forget who said it but you know the uh overnight success that took you know 14 years or whatever <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah and you know that's what I always try and remember if I get a bad review even the bible doesn't have all four five stars there you go right exactly. so I mean a lot of it is you may read a book and just rave about it. And I may read it and go, eh, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's the hard part about chasing reviews or chasing right. five stars. It, to a certain extent, it depends on who reads it. Uh, absolutely. And that's, I guess, one of the beauties of being an author is that there are so many different types of readers that you're going to appeal to someone. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Well, and that why, in, despite the fact that it's a really crowded marketplace, mm -hmm. to a certain extent, we're not competing with each other. Right. The hard, I love is, that. Exactly. And that's why I think writers are so giving and open. Mm -hmm. And it really is a great society. It, it really is. Yeah. But the problem is the reader pool is getting smaller. Oh. except for COVID, right. which, you know, did change things. <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. I'm right. hoping it lasts forever, but yeah. everybody nowadays, their uh, attention has so many outlets. Yeah. Well, Netflix. and their attention span is, you know, a 60 that second too. video or whatever. So that's exactly right. And that, yeah. that to me is the competition, not other authors. I agree with that. It's, yeah. Everybody's a, attention is drawn by a zillion different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting because because of that, that whole um, way of thinking or way of being, I guess, um, stories that have more that are more lyrical or that have more descriptive sections, people don't like them because they want the action. They want, you know, That's they want exactly. to go from action to action to action. And so, it's oh, you know, drug out. It was, you know, it's like. Yes. No, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, the industry calls those quiet books. Yeah. Oh, there's no car chases or. or right. Yeah. Companies. You know, quiet books where. They're, they're great books, but things don't blow up. Right. And the industry, New York, is just, they want action. And I well, get it. Chasing I the reasons, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You see the rise of thrillers, right? Domestic mm -hmm. thrillers. Wow. Yeah. Or even like they were saying at the conference um, a couple weeks ago that um, like the steamier books. Yes. Um, because there's, you know, the action. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because, you know, books, a lot of the classics, you know, my mom used to love Rosamund Pilcher. And I can't even imagine the reviews she'd get nowadays, you know, oh my exactly. gosh. You know. Well, <laughs> you know, when Jane you Austen, think, you know, I mean. Oh yeah. And you think about it, you know, uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder or, oh, yeah. or all the older books yeah. in those days, you had long winters where you were closed up in a cabin and blizzards are blowing outside and there's no exactly. radio, and no Netflix and no nothing. No neighbors they even. They <laughs> wanted those big books. Yeah. They wanted the elaborate descriptions yeah. of a of a, a tropical place so you could, you know, yeah, like somebody else's life. Live. Exactly. Exactly. But nowadays it's the polar opposite. Mm -hmm. Right. You have got to keep their attention. Right. To the right. point where, you know, they can leave it at any second and go, oh, I got stuff in the dryer, you know, exactly. Get it, whatever. But they have to be so glued to the page where that doesn't occur to them. Exactly. And that is hard. To it do. is. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a very different, different world, world for sure. So yeah. you write a lot of romance and women's fiction. That's your right. genres. Okay. And do you, are you on this, on the scale of sweet to steamy, where do you fall? You know, it's interesting. <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing because I always thought I was like middle of the road. Okay. And yet the, my first publisher called my, um, first uh contract sweet on a cowboy i've been called sweet and it's like what does that say yeah. about my hmm. sex life you know well and what does it say <laughs> about like where the industry has gone as to what makes something steamy well that's the I thing mean, and you can get away with a lot and about. still have it be sweet I mean, yeah everybody's opinions are all over the board what yeah. you call steamy i may call normal and right whatever. yeah so yeah. that's a that's a really hard thing to yeah try and but you're right it things have gone more that way I think after Fifty Shades you know Fifty yeah. Shades broke the mold and it went from there right right a lot of expectations there Whew. yeah so, <laughs> um you write mostly out west right yes always okay and. In Texas or all over well, the out all, all, all over, over the West. West. I okay. grew up outside of Detroit. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, in, just in a subdivision, right? But I, my sister and I, one day were watching the Rose Bowl, and it's sunny and eighty degrees, and you know, outside it's slushy and thirty-seven. Mm -hmm. You know, so she looked at me and said why don't we go there? <laughs> so I couldn't find a good reason why. Not so to, I sold yeah. my house. We packed up our two pinos and moved the cars, <laughs> not horses, and moved so funny. to California, sight unseen. Wow, that's amazing. Well, when you're young, you're dumb and don't know I you can you. die, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I would do something. I, mean, I would have done something like that too. So I totally and understand then, that. Then, I met my husband, who's a Texan, who was, is crazy about motorcycles. Okay. So I rode behind him. Every vacation we took was on motor. We put 10,000 miles on a motorcycle a year. That's and a lot of that's motorcycle. how I got to know the West. Yeah. And on a motorcycle, it's way different than it's being It's way there. different. Okay. Yeah. You're actually experiencing it. Yeah. So I fell in love with the West that way. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. So, and then so, I learned to ride my own and I've put 
a hundred thousand miles on my own too. So that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. And so you're, are you in Texas now? I am. I'm outside of okay. Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Loving it. I got here as fast as I could. I still don't have the accent. I'd love to have the accent. <laughs> yeah, you don't have the accent. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm still Midwestern accent. But I, I live in Florida and I definitely do not have a Southern accent. So no, it's, well, it's Florida, never happened. Though I'm not sure they have an accent. Do you think? There are people who um, ha- are born and bred Floridians and they they tend to have a southern accent oh do and they, they tend okay. to be further north in florida really um, closer well, to georgia all the snowbirds move exactly but south. yeah the rest of florida is a whole bunch of transplants and that's as I was far a, as i can get from the snow right the well keys. i was a california <laughs> transplant so yeah yeah go figure go figure that's so funny so you have a new book coming out yes tell me all about it I read the blurb um, on it and it sounds phenomenal. So I, I want to hear all about it. This has become my very favorite book that I've written now. I didn't think anything would supplant my other women's fiction I wrote, but this Isn't one that fun. It and I actually I learned uh, I spent a lot of time on Route 66 on the motorcycles. We even bicycled part of the wow. abandoned part. Okay. which sounds really cool, but there are, so it wasn't because <laughs> it's a mess. There are huge okay. holes and Ooh. trying to it just, okay. but anyway, we've, I've spent a lot of time on that road and I always wanted to write a road trip book. That's so fun. that's what I did. It's a um, work obsessed indie perfumer and the hippie grandmother that she bitterly resents they end up on a Route 66 road trip together. And it's sad and it's hysterically funny and it's just crazy. I love it, that. it is. There's a goat in a convertible. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it was a lot of fun to write. Oh, that sounds awesome. And so, where on Route 66 does it go? Well, they uh, actually start. I've got a map on my wall I'm looking at. Um, They go, they start in Arizona. Most of it is in Arizona. And then they end up in Vegas. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, Sonoma. and, And then, and there is a real wild kind of, uh, out there parts to that road you know everybody okay. thinks about the famous parts but the not famous parts oh there's some beautiful country out there that's just cool. lovely very cool okay and so um the story is women's fiction so is is there romance in it or not really there's a small romance subplot with the main character, uh, okay. the perfumer, okay. but it's mostly like family dynamics. Yeah, um, yeah. She, she always resented her grandmother because she was raised by an alcoholic. Her mom was an alcoholic and it, she was the only adult in the house as a mm. child, you know, yeah. and her her grandmother would stop in and shower them with love and gifts. And then the next morning okay. she'd be gone. Yeah. And she never understood why her grandmother did that. And along this trip, she discovers, they discover a lot about each other. Right. So that sounds it, fabulous. It was. It, it, I just love this book. That is awesome. And so far, readers on Goodreads have it at 4.8 stars. So that's great yeah it comes out in about 10 days it comes out on the 19th of april so okay i can't wait to see what people think that's exciting i'm looking forward to reading that one so that'll be a lot of fun so we in um the book club that i run we do each month we go to a different destination oh cool yeah this month we're in um, budapest and (gasps) Last month we were in New York City, and so it, we've so not it's done like a travel-oriented book. Yeah, 
Yeah. Very cool. I've never heard of that. That's neat. Well, I, I wound up reading um, Casey Dyer. Her book is 80 Days to Elsewhere, and it's kind of a takeoff on Around the World in 80 Days. Cool title. And uh, yeah, and I was like, I really want to talk to this author. <laughs> and, and I didn't have a book club. I didn't have anything. And so I wrote her a message and I was like, and this was before I knew, like, I mean, authors weren't like real people. They were authors, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so I sent her this message and I was like, hey, I really love this book. And I was wondering if you'd like to join me in my book club one month. And she's like, I'd love to. And I'm like, oh, crap. Now I, I, now I got to a book, book club. <laughs> That's one way to do it. <laughs> the you force. know what? That is so awesome. And honestly, <laughs> I encourage anyone who loved a book, get in touch with the author. You yes. have no idea. As we talked about, it takes us a year to write these yeah. books. It means so much to us. If somebody contacts us and goes, your book touched me, or I really yeah. enjoyed it. Oh. It means a lot. So yeah. don't hesitate. Don't think that, you know, this is an author. Big deal. It's a person just it's like It's a person, you. yeah. And that's, I, yeah. I, over the past, I guess, 15 months that I've been doing this, I have, I don't know, I've talked to maybe 40 authors everywhere from their first book is coming out soon to, you know, like Fiona Davis, who's got several New York Times bestsellers kind of, you know, and everything in between. And they're just people and I love that and exactly. I love that they like talking to readers they like you know they love talking about their books and they love that well people and the like other thing them. is is that authors are book nerds mm -hmm. that's how we all started out exactly so we automatically have a lot in common right right I'm one of those people that will see somebody reading a book in the airport and I'll <laughs> ask I'll stop and ask them <laughs> What and because I automatically have an affinity with them, I know yes. they like to read. Already have a kinship, yeah. I was walking exactly. on the beach the other day and saw some people reading, and I'm like peeking to see what books they are. Like, Absolutely, I really want to have a conversation with them, but that would be weird. <laughs> oh, I, I have, I have been weird. Yeah, and I have too. People looked at me and let me know that I was being weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so. Your book is due out on the 19th, and right. I assume that you're working on the next one. Well, I, in fact, I've turned in the next one. Wow, okay. And just, just got the editor's letter back on it. I knew it needed some work. I have got a lot of work ahead of me. Okay. But it's also another road trip. Oh, fun. Okay, where does, hmm? where does that one go? Where does that one go? It goes from Southern California and ends up at the border in Texas. Oh, but, okay. But it goes through Wyoming and everything. Boy, that's yeah. a that's a circuitous yeah. route. Yeah, wow. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So oh, that'll I, be fun. I have a lot of work to do on it. It's two sisters. Okay. On a motorcycle, actually. Oh, that'll so. be fun. Have you done motorcycle? You have a motorcycle series. Right. Um, I not a series, but that first book I wrote that took me forever um, was published, and it's about a woman on a motorcycle. Okay. Yes. okay. So yeah, I do. I do use my own life in my right. What book. you know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. That and the other thing that really factors into my writing is my other passion, bull riding. Oh, cool. Okay. No, weird. I am. That's awesome. Weird. I you... just, I, no, I have been to a bull fighting clinic. You know, the, they used to call them clowns, the guys that distract the bulls right. when the guys fall off. Um, I've been to a clinic, but my husband would not let me go in there and fight a bull. I wanted to so bad. If I'd have been 10 years younger, I would have, but I probably How fascinating. Wouldn't. It wouldn't have ended well. So it's probably better. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. I'm just a huge fan of that sport. That's so cool. I've never been to a rodeo or seen bullfighting or any of that kind of stuff. Oh, so. And you've got to go. That, it you've seems, yeah, that's. You also have 
a website that you're part of called Writers in the Storm? Uh, Tell I me was about that project. I, I was a founder of right of that website. I'm no longer blogging with them just okay. because I, I've got a zillion things going on. But sure. it is a uh, website devoted to the craft of writing. Nice. So there's that's mainly what it's about. Uh, okay. Marketing, writing, uh, everything related to that world. So okay. if anybody listening is a budding writer or aspiring writer, I recommend they go. It's uh, writersinthestormblog.com. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, I love when writers give back in that way, um, where it's, they're more accessible, I guess, you know, for and, new writers. And do, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And they do it a lot. They do. And, yeah. We all got help when we were starting yeah. and I want to give back. I teach, uh, writing as well, oh, you cool. know, different craft subjects okay. because I want to give back. Mm -hmm. that it's such a hard thing to learn to do yeah. we all had English in high school and we all have read tons of books but mm -hmm. actually getting your thoughts on paper in a compelling way creating right. characters that are fully formed and it you're doing a lot of things at one time yeah. so it's yeah I always say it's like learning to play golf while you're riding a unicycle. You know? <laughs> it's just a lot it's, of things. All a lot of life. things going on. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Well, excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. I enjoyed oh this conversation. God. I'm thrilled. Thank you so much for asking me. My pleasure. And your new book is coming out on the 19th. On the 19th. The Road and to Me. The Road Lord. to Me. Thanks for joining me today on the Literary Escapes podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode and maybe would like some more Literary Escape book recommendations, then come check out the Literary Escape Society. We are a community of travelers who love books or maybe book lovers who love to travel. Either way, if you need an escape, a literary escape, come join us as we read our way around the world together, one book at a time. Check out the show notes to learn more about the Literary Escape Society. And we'll see you next time on the next episode.